So uh, I'm Rebecca Galustian. I'm a systems engineer with Exagrid, and today we're. If you're not familiar with Exagrid and our solution, hopefully by end of today's presentation, you'll be able to at least know more, uh, not only about the company but also about our product as well. Um, as it's indicated, Exagrid is a disk backup and a deduplication appliance all in one. It's two solutions in one packaging. Uh, the picture you're looking at is actually three of our appliances stacked up together. Each one of our appliances is a 2U or a 3U form factor. And as part of the, the, I'll go into more details about this, but one of our key feature sets that we bring to the table is the grid architecture. That you can add these appliances on top of each other to build the grid just like Lego base. So you don't have to ever go and rip and replace and bring something new just because you want to add capacity or something. So we'll talk about in this about this in more details. So let's talk about some of the challenges that IT is faced with when it comes to the backup and recovery uh, altogether. There we go. <laughs> so meeting backup windows. The data is growing and growing as we all know. IDC even reports that. So that affects how you're backing up your environment. The backup window shrinks for business reasons as well. So that affects as, a, as part of your backup window meeting that requirement. Server virtualization, that's another uh, shift in paradigm when it comes to backing up that environment. The same rules and, uh, that you, how you back up your physical environment does not apply to the virtual environment. There is much more efficient way to deal with that. Longer retention, that's another headache that ties with the data growth as well. Whether for business reasons or compliance reasons, you're asked to keep the data longer and longer and that, that ties to the data management. And of course, all of that has a cost associated with that. And we know IT's budget doesn't grow with the same exponential factor that the data grows. So all of these are the challenges that IT is faced with that Exagrid has, with the approach that we have taken, we address every one of these challenges. We give you a fast backup and fast recovery, regardless how much your environment grows. We can give you, help you with the dealing with the offsite disaster recovery and not needing to go through, you can recover your environment, not needing to go through a mountain of tapes to, to reach that. And of course, we will try to give you a very reliable solution and keep your costs down. Sorry, it's a bit slow. <laughs> so at the minimum, the three walk uh, items to take away from today's presentation. If nothing else, if you don't remember anything else, just remember these three items. Exagrid can permanently shorten your backup window regardless of how much your environment grows. So meeting or shortening the backup window is one of our key feature sets that we bring. We can instantly recover the virtual machines and files, and we demonstrate this, that how we can stand up the virtual machine running directly off of the backups on the Exagrid in less than two minutes, and we can protect your budget. Any thoughts and questions so far? Just one comment, and maybe you can repeat it too, is uh, this is different than Veeam. Veeam is the backup software that we use, and they work very closely with Veeam. With Veeam. So this is not a competing technology, it's a complementary technology. Absolutely, and I'll get to that in more details as well. Is there a capacity limitation? No, and, and I'll address that in, in upcoming slides. So about the company, we are a global company. We are private, but we are a global company with offices in North America, Asia Pacific, and Europe. We have only one solution that we focus our R&D on, and that's the disk backup and the deduplication appliance. We have over 5,000 installations already, and out of the entire customer base, more than 300 of them have agreed to be a public reference for us. We're very proud of this. If you go to the exagrid.com, you'll see a very, very long list of customers that have gone through the legals and the testimonials, video testimonials, written documentations. We're very proud of that because if you take all our competitors combined, from the EMCs and the quantums and so forth, none of them come anywhere close of having this many references. So we are a backup software agnostic. As mentioned, we are a target for the backups because we are a disk backup and a dedupe appliance. We support more than 20 different backup applications, you name it. So again, we are 
you can consider us more like backup software agnostic from semantics to EMC we have even install base of networker EMC customers using Exagrid as the target so and um, Veeam also we are very very good partner with Veeam and I'll talk about some of the feature sets that we can enhance with Veeam <laughs> there we go so it's nice, but we know that we have a very good product, but it is nice when it gets recognized by the industry analysts as well. So Gartner speaks very highly of us, and we won Technology of the Year from InfoWorlds as well as the Storage Magazine picked us among all the other solutions in the market. So beating the big guys such as the EMC data domains or the semantics and quantums and so forth. DCIG, actually, this is uh, not only 2011, but we do have the copy of actually 2013. Um, it's an independent uh, study of all the different deduplication appliances in the market. So they go through a testing of all the different appliances that are in the market. We're very proud of the results because not only back in 2011, but also in 2013, we walked away taking seven of the top ten, including the top three, went to Exagrid. So again, we, it's nice when, when we can outperform the, the EMC data domains or the, the quantums and so forth that people think just because they've been around, they have a better technology, but they don't. So when it's an independent, not paid by any vendors, we beat them in those. So again, we are very proud of the, our, Gina calls it our wall of fame. This is just a snapshot of some of our sample customers we have, some of our existing customers in different market segments, just to show that our solution is not targeted for a specific market vertical. We support all the different market segments, and this is just a handful of customers in each one of them, including government space. So security is a requirement for you. We can definitely address those as well. Any thoughts, questions so far before I go into the start diving into the technology. No? You're good? Okay. What you're looking at is a typical IT environment. You have the different clients, different workloads, your email server, database server, file servers, virtualized environment, and so forth that you try to protect. It comes through a backup application, through a backup server, or you land it on the disk first and then push it to the tape or to the tape. This is a typical IT setup, you would say. So where we it's in display, right, though. It's in display, right, hopefully. So where we sit is actually, we, sit, we are a target for the backup. So we sit behind the backup server, so, and our connection is through Ethernet. We support both 1 gig and 10 gig Ethernet, and the protocols that we support are SIFs and NFS. So. The installation is included as part of the purchase of the Exagrid. We do not charge for installation. It takes less than two hours. Very simple to do. All you have to do is just give it an IP address, a host name, and then create shares to be the target for the backup jobs. As simple as that. So instead of sending the backups to go to the tape library, all you have to do is just from the backup server direct them to come to the Exagrid. We also support virtual backups such as Veeam or VRanger or VMware's tools directly uh, coming to the Exagrid. And in case of the databases, in majority of the times we see that the database team, the DBAs like to be in charge of their own backups. So what normally they do, they do their SQL dumps, put them on the file server, and ask the IT team to come and back it up from there. That's a two-step process, not to mention that the space that it takes from the primary storage. What you can do is, is give the DBAs their own access, their own share off of the Exagrid, have them do the dump directly, put it on the Exagrid. So that's a one-step process and not to take space from the file server itself either. So we support Oracle, Oracle RMAN, we support SQL, different tools for SQL. We even support TAR. So if you have a specific Unix environment that the backup application for some reason can, cannot back it up, you can use the TAR format and put it on the Exagrid directly. It's a tar, it's Unix, just collect the files. Okay. Yeah. And if you have a requirement to keep the data off-site, you can simply replicate to a secondary Exagrid appliance as well. We do not charge for any replication licenses. 
So as again, the, the beauty of the exagrid is everything is inclusive. Installation, no licenses or anything. We'll talk about this in more details. So where is exagrid different from the data domains or the quantums and other solutions in the market? Um, we are a post-process, whereas comparing to an inline solution. So what it means is when you're doing a backup, as the backups are coming, with this inline solution, they take the data, they have to go through a splitter, split it into small 8K blocks, assign a hash code to each one of those blocks, compare those hash codes against the hash table to figure out what is unique, what is duplicate. Throw away the duplicates, keep the unique ones, land them on the disk. This entire process, which is very, very CPU intensive, not to mention that it can get longer and longer, depends as your data grows, that hash table grows, it's part of the backup stream itself. So the backup is now finished until that data lands on the disk. So if you're trying to keep your uh, backup window shorter, this is not a solution to have because this will affect the backup window still. Exagrid took a different approach. We are a post-process. Because we are a disk backup first, the, as the backup comes in, take the data, land it on the disk as fast as the disk can take it, we return the handle, backup is finished. Then behind the scene, we go through the process of deduplication. We do not believe the deduplication process should be part of the backup stream itself. So as a result, this is how we can shorten your backup window and also not to affect the backup with the deduplication process itself. So deduplication is trying to give you a, a smaller footprint of the same data that you have. So if you're repeating and you're backing up the same data over and over again, you only keep that copy once. But having distilled the retention, you still keep track of how many times you backed it up. But just like reading a book, right? So how many times the word the is repeated in that book? So if you take only each one of those unique words and keep it only once, then that book will shrink and shrink, whereas being a thick book. So that's the concept of the deduplication. You still, uh, you still back up and you still have access to the same data, but you don't land it, you don't keep it in the same format over and over again. Uh, I have a slide coming up to talk about the value of deduplication. Just hold on, some more. <laughs> Does this make sense? Inline versus post-process? Now with the inline solution, we just went through that lengthy process to deduplicate data, small block, 8K blocks, put them on, spread them all on the appliance, right? So when you want to do a restore, now you have to go through a rehydration process, reassemble all those blocks together to recreate that data. It's like walk in the middle of a room with a deck of cards and just toss all the cards out and now start to go collect them. It will take time. Whereas with us, because we are a disk backup first, the same data exists in our disk backup, untouched, unmodified, just a regular disk backup. So if you want to do a restore from there, we can restore it very quickly. Or even if you want to create a tape copy of it, we don't have to go through a rehydration process. And even if we have to go and rehydrate data from our dedupe zone, the algorithm that we use is very different from our competitors. So this is how we can reassemble the data much faster than the, our competitors can do. So this is how we won so many awards from a performance perspective, beating the EMCs or the quantums and so forth, being fastest when it comes to the backup and, and recovery. And as mentioned, with the partnership that we have with Veeam, we can enhance some of the key feature sets that they bring, such as instant VM recovery. What it means is that you can stand up when the VM virtual machine goes down, everybody is trying to scramble and bring the virtual machines as fast as possible up and running. You can have that running directly off of the exagrid, having the application up, virtual machine is up, users are happy, now you can go troubleshoot and find out what happened, why the VM went down in the first place. And once you have that, then you can as easily, once you corrected the situation, you can as easily re-motion it back and run it in its place. But we give you the access or the ability to stand up the VM running from its backup 
in less than two minutes. Question? So the host seeing that, that uh, data source? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So the question was that if the host will see that data store from the backup, and yes, the answer is yes. There are other feature sets that Veeam brings to the table, such as Sure Backup and so forth. Again, Exegrid, uh, as part of our partnership with Veeam, we do support those feature sets. And actually, in the next releases coming up, there will be additional or more integrations. We have part of their code will be running, as will be merged with, with the Exegrid code itself. So should not be saying more, but better things to come. <laughs> so we will be the only ones, again, in the market supporting those. Any question between inline versus post-process? Because we always get criticized by our competitors that post-process is a bad thing. And I'm like, OK, if we can shorten the backup window, run faster, restore faster, why is it a bad thing? So this is why we won so many awards. Yes. on their appliance. So again, it's not finished. That backup stream is not finished until that data lands on the disk. So they have a CPU, and I'll talk about the, the part of the controller head. It happens on their appliance. They do have a, fee, uh, a piece of software called DD Boost, which is offloading part of that processing onto the media server. But that works only with Semantics uh, net backup as well as with uh, their own networker. But that means that DD Boost is what it's doing is offloading the work because it is so much it's very CPU intensive and it takes time they want to offload that to the media server which the media server the backup media server becomes the bottleneck by then appliance that's correct but we do it after the backup is done right we were not affecting the backup window they're doing while the backup is happening so that's why the backup is not finished until that deduplication process is finished and lands it on the disk. That's why it takes longer and longer, especially if your data is growing, that hash table grows, and then the comparison is going to take longer and longer. This is why they always have to refresh their controller to get the fastest CPU, because it is very, very CPU intensive. Sure. And I didn't repeat the question. <laughs> 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 so with the single controller model, which majority of the appliances out there are uh, in this, fall into this architecture, there is the controller head that gives you the, the CPU, the memory, the network interface, and a bunch of this it comes in. And again, this is logic, that that controller head meets certain, let's say in this example, it's a 10 terabytes, it meets that backup it can do the backup of that 10 terabytes in certain period of time. That's the backup window, right? Logic says that's what it can do. Now, if you try to grow the environment with that single controller model, what it does is just adding disk behind it. Now, the graphics are not coming out good, but that's OK. Just assume this is disk. We're adding disk behind the same controller head. Now, in this example, we are adding 10 terabytes of increments they're just adding disk. You're not giving any additional processing power to the controller, to this appliance. So what it's going to do, again, this is physics, right? The backup window is going to grow and grow and grow. It affects your backup window. The same processor that could process that 10 terabytes in certain amount of time, it cannot process, let's say, 50 terabytes in the same amount of time. It's going to process it much longer until it gets to a point that that controller head can no longer support the additional capacity behind it. Then you will be forced to go what we call a forklift upgrade. Replace that controller head and bring something new, faster processor, or a different controller that can support the additional growth behind it. This is a very costly element because if you don't do this, and you just buy appliances here and there, then there is no rhyme or reason, there is no coordination, and it will be a management of headache dealing with that. Exagrid takes a different approach. Every time with the same controller head, let's say with the grid architecture, 
we give you the same CPU memory, network interface, and a bunch of tests that we can support. In this example, again, same 10 terabytes. But every time you're adding capacity, we're not adding just disk behind the same controller. We are giving you the additional processing power that you need to support the additional capacity. This is how you can add nodes on top of each other like Lego base and build the grid from there. So this is how we can keep your backup window intact. We, it's more like, given we are always driving on the freeway system, you know, given that it took us how long to get down here. Think of it that when there is only a freeway system, let's say the five freeway has a certain number of lanes. When there's only a few cars in the lane, everybody's going very fast, everybody's very happy. As more cars are coming in, you're not adding any lanes. So you get to a traffic congestion, you cannot move faster anymore. That's this model. Imagine every time more cars are coming in, we automatically add lanes to support that additional workload that came in. So that's how we can keep everybody happy with the, from a performance perspective. Question. Isn't it, isn't it just more expensive to keep adding storage as you go, or is it, is it cost effective in the long term? It is cost effective in the long term, but it is the flexibility, and, and I'll talk about that from an economic model, when you compare the two side by side, you'll see that it is actually, it would make sense. And I have the next slide, actually, if you hold on to that question, I'll, we call it the CFO slide. And it shows from that perspective that it is much more cost effective with the grid architecture versus the controller. You mentioned that the Yorkers, the way you do it, the controller comes on the appliance. Yes. It comes with it. You don't have to buy another controller. Uh, Correct. But, but in the competition, there's only one controller, and as you add, Correct. Adding the disk behind it, the disk is cheap, but then 80% of the cost is in that controller, which, again, if you are forced to go through a forklift upgrade, whether you cannot support the capacity or it gets end of life, then, again, you're taking that cost out and adding another, again, you're paying 80% of the cost is in your controller. And they will talk about that, the, um, about end of life. Uh, coming, that why they have to go and refresh that controller head so often, because we talked about that with the inline solution, their process is so CPU intensive, they have to rely on the fastest CPU when it comes out. So this is how they have to refresh the controller head, always provide you with the fastest CPU, because that's what their logic is tied to. And we know the cost of when the brand new, the most fastest CPU comes out of from Intel, it is very, very costly. And guess who pays for that cost? The customers. So we give you a very scalable solution that you don't have to, that keeps your backup window. So again, with the growth, we give you the linear performance, very scalable solution, building this grid architecture that you don't have to go through rip and replace and forklift upgrade. You can avoid that. Now, another beauty thing about Exagrid, which is very unique, and it's only applicable to, to Exagrid with the grid architecture, is all these nodes in this example are a 10 terabyte increments. They don't have to be. We give you the flexibility to add any capacity node in the grid. Again, this is only unique for Exagrid. There are other grid architectures out there, and I'll compare those, but to Exagrid, you're using Exagrid, you can add any capacity nodes in the grid. Also, we do not end of life our product. You can also mix any generation of the hardware in the same grid. Truly give you the, the flexibility and the cost from an IT perspective, your, your investment protection. We call this the CFO slide. Why? Let me build the slide first, and why puts you, in this case, puts you on the red, as you mentioned. So whether if the product has been end of life, because they have to refresh the controller head, or you run out of capacity, with the single controller model, you have to go through what we call the forklift upgrade to get the next unit, to buy the next model. Every time you go through this process, it's not only disruptive of your environment, but 
rip, rip, rip it out, bring something new, you will be forced to pay for additional licenses. Also, you will be forced to pay for professional services to migrate data from the old system into the new system. Those are additional costs can as easily be avoided if you had Exagrid. Ex with Exagrid, no forklift upgrade, we do not end up life our product. As we mentioned, you can mix different generation of the hardware in the same grid. You can also mix different capacity of nodes in the same grid. So we truly give you the flexibility to add and buy what you need, not size you for, let's say, three years worth of space ahead of time. You can just buy what you need and grow from there year over year if you need it, when you need it. Actually, re recently announced um, a newer model, and I'll talk about it. In this example, it shows that in a single grid, we can support up to 130 terabytes of backup data. That's not the capacity of the grid, but we size based on how much front-end data we can back up in a single grid. With our new model, the 21,000 model that was just added, in a single grid, we can support up to 210 terabytes of backup data. If you were to do a full backup once, 210 terabytes in a single grid. You have customers who have a whole lot more data, but that means you stand up another grid. The question is if we allow loaner equipment to do proof of concept, and the answer is yes. So this is why, again, keep in mind, this is backup environment. Usually people don't care about backup unless you want to do a restore, right? So the same concept, the same economy of how often you want to go refresh your backup environment versus your primary storage, they're different things. Primary storage is expected to go through a refresh often, but not necessarily your backup environment. So having the flexibility that you don't have to go rip and replace, bring something new, and we give you the flexibility to even mix different generation of the hardware in the same grid, it's truly the investment protection. Make sense? Any questions? Again, single controller versus grid. Grid is not easy to do. Again, it, it takes a lot of engineering to be able to support a grid, especially if you can support different capacity of the nodes and, and being able to load balance. Do you still have your first generation grid out there being used? Like yes. Yes. We've been shipping since 2006, and we do have customers who, have, who are buying newer models today and mixing it. We are in generation four hardware, and yes, we do. Yep, it works. That's the whole investment protection, right? <laughs> this is just another slide to show the different backup applications or uh, database applications that we support with Exagrid. Again, we are just a target for the backups. Uh, any of these technologies, if you have, we do have certifications. We go through the certifications regularly. Um, you're, again, backup software agnostic. So we do have customers who buy us just for database backups. We do have customers who started that way, and the database team gets its own shares, and the IT team has its own shares, and they all run their backups simultaneously. So, and our appliances can handle the load. So let's take a look a bit more details what goes behind the covers again. What you're looking at is, again, the same um, workload, the same clients that you're trying to protect their data, right? You have the email server, database server, file server, virtualized environment, goes through some sort of a backup server, and we land the data on the Exagrid. Exagrid has two areas. Again, we talked about the disk. It's two solution in one. It's a disk backup and a dedupe appliance, not just a dedupe appliance. The disk backup, what we call the landing zone. And the dedupe area where we keep the data deduplicated is what we call repository. So when the backup comes in, let's say this example, a 10 terabyte backup. Backup comes in, landed on the disk, just like any disk staging. Backup is done. Now we own the data. 
Now behind the scene, we go through the deduplication process. The first time through, we don't have anything in the repository to compare the two backups against each other. So the best we're going to get, and it's only uh, not us, data domains, quantums, everybody, is going to see to 4 to 1 compression or about 2 to 1 compression from the first original backup. So let's take the conservative route and say the first backup, when we go through the deduplication process, we compress the data to be 5 terabytes, 2 to 1. Okay, this is the data within itself. Now if you notice, we'll have the data in two places. I can do a restore and it can come in from any of this area. When it comes in the next 10 terabytes of backup, we're backing up, not giving me the colors. <sighs> That's okay, so should be in a different color to show the, the comparisons. Um, so we overwrite the data that it's in the landing zone. Why? Because we can recover the data from the repository. So when we do the other backups, I can write, uh, overwrite the data in the landing zone because, again, we can recover from the repository, from the previous backup. But now that I have something in here, I can compare the data against each other to get a better deduplication. So the algorithm that uh, Exagrid uses is actually a mathematical algorithm and results in about 2% delta change between the two backups, roughly. Type, data types matter, but roughly, usually, it becomes about 2% delta change. So in this example, that 10 terabyte backup, comparing with the previous backup, another 10 terabytes that we had, it results in about 200 gig delta. The next backup comes in, backup number three, which you should see it in a different color, but you don't. We go through this process about five times. Let's see if I have my five backups. So let's assume we went through five 10 terabyte backups, whether it was five days of 10 terabytes full backups every day, whether it was 10 terabytes of full backup on the weekend and then incrementals during the, 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 the week that results in about another full backups amount. Five 10 terabyte backups can be about 50 terabytes worth of space. 50 terabytes if this was tape or regular storage that you had to keep that data for. 50 terabytes. You asked me about the value of a deduplication. With deduplication, especially with exagrid, that becomes 5.8 terabytes of space. So 50 terabytes of backup, if you were to use tape or regular storage, it will be about 50 terabytes of space. But with exagrid, with the deduplication, results in about 5.8 terabytes of space. We give you the control to keep the data, longer retention, in a much smaller footprint. And if you were to do a restore, again, because we have a landing zone, this is where the data is untouched, just like disk staging, you can always do the restores from the landing zone. Or even if you have to reconstruct, it will be much, much faster applying those to small byte level changes. So not block level, byte level. So make it much easier to reconstruct the data when it comes to the recovery. Regardless, your view is always to the data through the backup server. When you want to do a restore, you pull the menu and say, I want to recover this XLS file, this PowerPoint file, or I want to restore this entire server. Where the data is coming from, whether it's in the landing zone or in a repository, is transparent to you. You do not know, you do not need to know where the data is, except that it will be delivered and restored where you decided to be. Okay? Questions? Thoughts? So it doesn't matter if the primary uh, storage is deduplicated? Yes, because we're talking about backup data, not the actual files. Yes, like NetApp would dedupe data at the file level. We're talking about the backup data, which each backup application has its own proprietary metadata 
that encapsulates the data around it. So we were talking about the deduplicating backup data. Now, if you have a requirement to keep the data off-site, we give you the flexibility to replicate to a secondary exagrid appliance as well. Now, the same 10 terabyte example that we just saw on the primary site, remember, we shrink it down to be 5 terabytes originally. So, in a case of needing to keep the data off-site, you, we, after the initial seeding of that same 5 terabytes on a, another exagrid appliance, we ship the appliance to the secondary site, at the DR site. Now the DR site also has a copy of that 5 terabytes. What we replicate over the wider area is those 2% delta changes. The deduplicated data, those 2% delta changes that it's already been deduplicated. That's what we replicate across to the DR site on a nightly basis. This is why we are much more optimized taking advantage of a very low bandwidth needed replicating data across to a DR site. Exagrid has a feature called instant DR. With the instant DR, what it means is when we replicate those changes across to the DR site, we merge them to the original image that we had to give you always the latest up-to-date backup data. Again, those 2% delta changes, when they're sent across to the DR site, we merge them to the original image to give you always the latest up-to-date backup data. Why? Because then all you have to do is just one step to do a restore. <coughs> yes. That's why after the initial seeding, we do that at the primary site and then ship the unit off-site. So you don't have to do that over the wire. Yes. Again, with the instant DR, you will have access to always the latest up-to-date backup data at DR site that you can do one step restore. Think of it, if this was tape, you had to first load the full backup and then apply all the incrementals to get to that latest backup, which takes time. But this feature, with Exagrid, is one step restore. When it comes to replication, we do support multi-sites. The topology that we support is a hub and spoke. You can do unidirectional or bidirectional replication. Regardless of how many sites you have and how you're replicating, they all can be managed from a single user interface. All the exagrid appliances, whether it's in a single node or in a grid, they do communicate with each other. So you could be sitting in New York managing data for Miami. You could be sitting in New York managing data for Vancouver. The user interface is a browser-based, and no, no need to install any software or any agents or anything. Just type in the IP address and you get connected to the exagrid. Once you go through the login, this is the very first screen you see. On the left-hand side is all the different sites and all the different exagrids that you have at each site will be listed. This is what we call the resource tree. You click at each one of the sites and manage that appliance, manage the the configuration and so forth. This is why I said you can be sitting in New York managing data from Miami. You don't have to be in Miami. On the main page, we see information, detailed information about that site. Right now in this example, we are looking at New York. On the top part, we give you information about disk backup area. This is the landing zone. Just regular disk backup. Gives you the total space, the actual space, and it says 100% available for next backup. That doesn't mean there is no data in there. That means the data is already been processed. It's available in the repository if you want to uh, recover from, but it's available for next backup. That means I can overwrite the data that it's in there. The middle portion is the retention space. This is where we give you information about the repository. This is where we keep the deduplicated data give you the actual space that it's been, is available, how much has been consumed, 
and what is the total space capacity of the repository. When you start originally, it's going to be 100% green. But as you deduplicate data and store there for its retention, you're going to see this yellow bar is going to grow and grow, and you're going to see less of the green. And the bottom part is the different shares created to be the target for the backup jobs. You see the different shares, the different deduplication ratios you're getting for backing up those shares, total backup data, and how much space is being consumed. So in a single view, once you log in, they give you all the information at your fingertip. You do not need to, line, uh, to run any command lines or anything else to even get the deduplication ratio, which a lot of the data domain customers tells, tells us that they have to run several command lines to even get the, the half the information that we dis display. No command lines with us. Everything is browser-based. Very easy. Just like how easy it is to set up our appliances, it is very easy to manage as well. As you can see, there's not that many options up there. It says report, manage, log out, help. Help will give you access to all the documentations online. Log out is log out. Leaves you with reports and manage. Reports, you will have a lot of different canned reports to give you different reportings that you need, including the best one that we, we see a lot of customers using is the projection. Because we keep the entire history of the backups, we can do projections about the growth and if you, people use that to do capacity plannings and so forth for their follow-on years and so forth. And manage is where you create the shares and set up for replication. The same information that you see on the screen, it also gets emailed to you on a nightly basis. Same green bars, the yellow bars, and the stat statistics gets emailed to you on a nightly basis. So you don't even have to log into the Exagrid to get this information. It will be in your mailbox when you come in in the morning. A lot of customers tell us that they even forget that the Exagrid is there. <laughs> it does what it's supposed to do. From a, every appliance, regardless of its size, it has a lot of redundancy built into it. From a drive perspective, they're all, we support RAID 6, dual parity, and we also give you a spare. This means in each appliance, you can lose three drives, and you're still going to be operational. The fan trays, the power supplies, those are redundant as well. Just saw the, the user interface to it is browser-based, very simple to use. And that information gets emailed to you on a nightly basis. Every day you get the status report. If you have any SNMP monitoring in your environment, we do have our own MIB, which you can load and get additional telemetry information. But if, let's say, you get failures or anything, those alerts get sent to you as well. And on top of that, it gets also sent to the Exagrid support. We do have call home features standard with every one of our appliances. So it's nice to know another set of eyes is looking at the health of your system. With the purchase of the Exagrid and its maintenance, this is also unique to Exagrid. You will have your own dedicated support engineer assigned to your account. That dedicated support engineer, which is US-based, <laughs> Not only is the subject matter expert on the Exagrid, but also the backup application you're using. A lot of times customers do call us just to get help with the setup of the backup application. The maintenance covers both hardware and software. So if any hardware replacement, that is included, as well as software releases, firmware upgrades. No licenses to track. As I mentioned, everything is inclusive but it supports the, the, all the software releases as well, patches, firmware upgrades, and so forth. And believe it or not, that support engineer can also perform your firmware up, upgrades or even software updates and so forth. It becomes an extension of the IT team. We talked about the, the call home feature is standard. And when there is a failure of the drive or let's say the power supply, we do not dispatch an engineer on site. These are all customer replaceable units. 
we will ship you the replacement, guaranteed delivery by the next business day. So let's say you get a drive failure, we also get notified. We automatically open a ticket on your behalf and send you the replacement, guaranteed delivery by the next business day. We do have depots on all the FedEx offices, so that's how we can guarantee the SLA. All you have to do is just pull out the bad drive and put the new one in, you're good to go. And this is part of, again, our standard offering. There is no cost for having your own dedicated engineer or any of these features. Yes, even if your system totally goes down, crashes, we get notified. There are two ways of, the, the call home feature works in two ways. You either FTP the information or email. There are signals to send that, again, the support engineer is the one that always watches, gets those reports as well. So if you get that report, would you, would you proactively just ship us another one? Yep. Or you have to wait for us to come? Nope. We will ship you another one. Uh, customers do tell us that they go on vacation, they come and they see a drive sitting in there. And the note says, like, such and such drive has failed, so they go and just pull out. The LED will tell you which one failed. And I believe you're even making a graphical interface in the next, as part of the management. So it's going to be all graphical. So you'll see exactly which drive failed, and you can just pull out and put the new one in. Yep. It's nice to know, like, a drive shows up. It's like, oh. I guess I have a failure. I got to go deal with it. Because, as I said, you have you can lose three drives, and you're still going to be operational. Any questions? I think this is my summary slide. So again, with the Exagrid, we talked about that how we are two solution in one. It's a disk backup and a dedupe appliance, not just a dedupe appliance. The whole model is designed to be very easy to use, easy. To, to operate more like plug and play and forget about it. Very seamless integration into your environment, no software to install, no agents to deploy. All you have to do is just redirect backups instead of going to tape to come directly to the exagrid. We talked about that how with our grid architecture, we give you the flexibility to add nodes like Lego based of any capacity size as well as any generation of the nodes on top of each other. As you can see in this pictures, three of our nodes, uh, different capacities are stacked up to build a grid. How we give you the fastest backup and recovery because of our grid architecture versus an inline solution with a single controller model. With our instant DR, we give you the flexibility to go through instant restore, one-step recovery if you need to from a DR site. Again, the different backup applications that we support, we, we are backup software agnostic. Here in this slide, actually, you, you see about eight of our appliances. We do have a new one added in. Uh, the way the numbering works with Exagrid is the numbers tied into support. That shows that is that appliance is designed to support that amount of backup data. For example, EX1000 is designed to support one terabyte of backup data. Again, if you were to do a full backup once, you have about one terabyte of backup data, then EX1000 will be model to go with. With that, you get one terabyte of usable space to be the landing zone, this backup, plus you get another one terabyte usable space to be the repository where you keep your dedupe data for its retention. Total of two terabytes usable. The reason I say usable, because with RAID 6 and the spare, raw capacity is much higher but nobody cares about raw. It's the usable capacity we care. Same goes with the EX13000E. It's designed to support 13 terabytes of backup data, which with that, you get a total of 26 terabyte usable space between landing zone and repository. The line between landing zone and repository is not a hard line, it's a soft line, and it can vary on the size. You can have smaller landing zone and bigger repository. It depends on your retention. The 21,000E, the newest model, again, supports 21 terabytes of backup data in a single unit. We are talking about the single units. And with that, you get 20, 42 terabytes of usable space in a, 
for this iterabyte, yeah. Sing usable space between landing zone and repository. Now the question is, what about I have 60 terabytes of data? If you remember, I said with the grid, you mix and match any of our appliances together to meet the capacity that you need. You go through an exercising exercise, depends on the retention, the type of data, and how much data we're backing up, we can give you a combination of any of this to build the grid. Are you showing the old and the new units side by side, or the old and new the same? No, we do only ship the new generation hardware. So the old one just becomes, they're not supporting anything? There is no old one. We still support the same capacities. We do not, we, so EX1000 or 13000, we do not end of life them. These are gener fourth generation of the hardware. They have newer components, but we still support the same capacity. So the same model number, it just has more capacity now, 210 instead of 130 terabytes. Yes, all this, so today we have nine different appliances that we can combine and, and ship, depends on your needs. So again, we give you the flexibility to mix and match any of them as how you see them. So today, let's say you say, Becca, I have 20 terabytes of data. And I said, okay, I can give you two tens, or I can give you a 13 and a seven. You go through the sizing exercise to see what, from a performance perspective, the type based on the type of data, which one would make sense. But you can mix and match any of them. including our new one, the 21,000, can be added to any of this. Absolutely. Any questions? Oh, awesome. Yeah, uh, I can give you guys my card, so if, if there are any questions that comes in mind, and that I, later on, let's say, wow, I should have asked Rebecca about this. So please don't hesitate. Thank you.